So far in this class, we've talked about lots of different ways that we can actually find a solution to a differential equation. So the differential equation could be separable, it could be linear, and we could use uh, integrating factor, um, or it could be exact, and we could use that method for exact equations. Now, if we there's it's possible, and there's lots of differential equations out there, that we can't actually use any known method to solve, and then it's nice to have a way to estimate them. So Euler's method is a way of estimating a solution. Um, so I'm going to show you this by an, an example as well. So let me write out the example. Let's estimate the solution to y prime equals 2y plus 1, uh, where y of 0 is equal to 3, uh, with, and we're going to estimate this with a step size, which I know you don't know what that means yet, but I'll tell you in a second. With a step size of, we put a variable h on there, this book uses h, at least I've seen lots of different things, but... Um, with a step size of 0.5, and we're going to estimate the solution where t is equal to 2. Okay, so the way that we do this, or the idea of this, um, and actually in order to show you the idea, I'm just going to draw a random graph. Random graph. Uh, random. So here is our y, but let's say that that is so complicated we don't even know what that is. So this would be a function of t and y. Now what we could do is start with something initial. So this one has y of 0 equals 3, so let's just say it's right there. So there's that point zero three. Now what we can do instead of um, finding the actual value is that we could use the slope, which we know, because the derivative is slope, and here's the slope dependent on y. So we can use that slope, and we could follow that slope. So that's a straight line right there. <laughs> it's kind of hard with these pens. Um, so that's a straight line, and we can follow that a step size distance. So that would be a distance of 0.5 right there over. And then we can find the point value there. So that point value is going to be 0.5 and then some new value for y, but it's dependent on that slope and not on the actual value. So there's going to be some error with this. Um, but through this graph, I wanted to give you an idea of what we're doing. So again, what we're doing is finding the next values of y's, but they're just dependent on the slope and not the actual value of the graph. All right, so I need to undo all of this, oh my goodness, didn't mean to do that. Okay, and let me see if I can, can I erase? Okay, I had some technical difficulties there, but um, I was trying to erase, this thing wouldn't let me do it. I think I'm back on track. So we want to estimate the solution to this thing, this differential equation, uh, with a step size of 0.5, where t is equal to 2. All right, so we're going to do this with, it's an iterative method, and um, I like to make a table out of this. So I like to make a table with my t values, my y values, and I'm going to leave myself quite a bit of space in here. And then the slope values. Now slope is equal to y prime, and I usually like to write in my equation for that slope. All right, so now we um, are always given a starting value for t and for y in this. So that starting value, there's that initial condition, t is 0, y is 3. So we can write that in there. t is 0 and y is 3 to start off with. So that means that our starting slope is going to be 2 times the y value, 3 plus 1, so that's 6 plus 1. So the slope, our starting slope is 7. So from the point 0, 3, we're going to follow a slope of 7 until we hit a next t value, which is going to be at point 5 because every t is going to step point 5. So at this point, I would fill in the t values. I know that everyone steps point 5, so we're going to go point 5 and then 1. The next one will be 1.5, and the next one will be 2.
And I'm going to stop right there because all we're interested in in this problem is the solution where t is equal to 2. So I know I can stop there. All right, so now the next thing that I want to do is find this y value. Now, this y value is our next y value along this kind of in this iterative method. And it comes from the previous y value uh, plus the slope times h. And let me tell you where I got this whole equation from. I'll put it over here on the side. Um, now, remember that slope is a change in y over a change in x. Right? It's like y2. This should look very familiar. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now that goes back to algebra. So um, in this, for that slope of value, we've got a y2 and a y1. So that would be the uh, next y value minus the previous y value. So y next minus y, oh boy, previous, that's a P for previous right there, <laughs> divided by our change in X every time, in this case, is the step size. So now if I multiply by H on both sides, I've got MH equal to Y next minus Y previous, and then add that Y previous over to the other side. So if you add the y previous, then you get the equation for this guy. So sometimes I forget that equation, but I remember it always just goes back to an equation for slope, and then I can always find it again. Okay, so now let's use that equation and find our next value. So the next value is going to be the previous y value, which is 3, plus that slope from the previous one, which was 7, times our step size, which in every case right now is 0.5. All right, so this would give us a value of 7 times 0.5, that's 3.5, so 6.5. All right, now the next slope. So the next slope is going to be 2 times that y value of 6.5 uh, plus 1. So that next slope value is going to be 14. Next y value, the previous, 6.5 plus the slope, which was 14 times that h value, 0.5. So this would give us 14 times 0.5 is 7. 7 plus 6.5, so 13.5. The next slope, 2 times 13.5 plus 1. The next slope, we get 28. The next uh, y value is 13.5 plus that 28 times 0.5. And so for that one, we're going to get 27.5. The next slope, 2 times, I'm going faster here because this is a little tedious. Uh, we get 56. So 27.5. Um, plus 56 times 0.5 is equal to, and we get 55.5. All right, so the answer to this question, if I'm going to estimate the solution, remember that all solutions are y values. So basically this right here is our solution column, and we want the solution where t is equal to 2. So the solution to this, y at 2, is going to be 55.5. All right, so now I want to kind of give you some facts about it. So here's some facts about Euler's method. Um, so remember in the last problem that our initial, or our, our differential equation was y prime was equal to 2y plus 1. Now, we don't use Euler's method for an equation this simple. That's, it's really kind of a dumb thing to do because we can solve it. Um, but I wanted to use this one because it's solvable, and then I can show you something. So if you actually solve this, then you get 7e to the 2t 
uh, minus 1 all over 2. What I want to do is compare, so this is the actual y value right there. I want to compare the actual y value to the values that we got from the table on the other side. So for some different values of t, so when t is equal to 0.5, the actual y value um, from this equation is 9.01, and that's approximate. I plugged it into a calculator. Uh, but from the table, we get 6.5. And so this is the estimated value. The table is the estimated. So that's a pretty big error right there. Um, but check out what happens at t equals 2. So at t equals 2, the actual y value is approximately 190.59. But the estimated y value that we just got from the table is 59 point, or 55.5. I don't care what you're doing, that is horrible error right there. Um, so this is a method, but it, the further out you get from that initial condition, um, and the bigger the step size, so this was with an h of 0.5 right here, and with that step size, you're going to get horrible error. Now, if you decrease the step size, so I just want to show you one more thing, if you take a much smaller step size, so I did this with an Excel table, that step size of 0.01, um, because that's a lot of computation by hand. So let's look at those same two t values. We're, we're obviously going to get the same um, actual value since that was found from plugging into that equation up above for the solution. All right, so those were our two actual values. Now, using Excel, so this is coming from an Excel table, we, if you plug in or what you get for your solution when t equals 0.5, um, with that table you get 7.3 seven five and that's better that's closer to nine point oh one and then at t equals two you get oh gosh I'm hitting I'm reading the wrong thing right here uh one eighty three point two zero now that is true but this one I just read the wrong thing it's actually eight point nine two with the step size of point zero one so you can see that the smaller the step size uh the much better approximation you're going to get. And also, the closer you stay to your initial condition, uh, the better an approximation, uh, or the better the approximation. Um, so these are best done with a computer. So please bring calculators um, and a computer to class tomorrow if you have a laptop that you can bring, um, since this is much easier and more efficient to do with an Excel spreadsheet.